Yarn Society. Today we're going to crochet together this little duck named Dottie. You can crochet her in worsted or DK yarn and she stands about 4 inches tall. You can customize her with some furry wings, a hair tuft and bow, or even a little nest. I will show you how I did all of this so let's get started. For supplies, go ahead and grab two colors of your favorite yarn. Here I'm using Comfy Worsted by We Crochet or Knit Picks. It's the same yarn, it's just rebranded because We Crochet and Knit Picks are now sister companies. You can also use a DK yarn if you'd like. With that, we'll be using an E 3.5 crochet hook, and you can use that with DK or Worsted. A pair of scissors. We have a long piece of embroidery floss. You can use any color. I'm just using black and an embroidery needle, two stitch markers, a yarn needle, some pins. You'll want to grab some polyfill stuffing. And then if you want to add on a nest for the, your little duck, you can grab a J crochet hook and whatever bulky yarn you have. This is a Lion brand and I will link it in the description box below as I do not remember exactly which one it is. Also, if you'd like to make your wings a little furry, you can grab this pet slicker brush and I will also link this in the description box below. Okay guys, we're gonna get started on the head, so grab your hook, a stitch marker, and your yarn. For round one, we're gonna place six single crochet into a magic circle. If you have a specific way you like, go ahead and do that now. And if you don't know how to make a magic circle, you can follow along here. I'm gonna leave a long tail on my yarn. I'm gonna wrap it around two fingers crisscrossing at the top. I like to hold the tail with my ring finger. And then we're gonna push that back piece to the front and pull up on that back piece. Go ahead and make your slip knot and you can use your tail to tighten that loop. Insert your hook into the loop and then get set up with your yarn and we are going to chain two. We're gonna yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through one more time. We're gonna make six single crochet into the second stitch from the hook. So we're gonna place our hook underneath the top of that chain, yarn over and pull through. You'll have two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through again. That is your first single crochet. Insert your hook into the same stitch again. We're gonna yarn over, pull through, and then you're gonna yarn over and pull through once again. And that's single crochet number two. We're gonna place a third single crochet. Fourth. Fifth. And our sixth single crochet. From here, I wanna tighten up this loop, so go ahead and tighten that up. And then I like to place my stitch marker on the last stitch of the round. If you place it on the first, feel free to do that. This is just how I place my stitch marker. For round two, we're gonna increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next. So we're gonna place two single crochet into the same stitch to make an increase. Single crochet, one, and then we're gonna go back into that same stitch to make our second single crochet. We're gonna move over and make another single crochet. And then we're gonna make our second increase here. Single crochet into the next stitch. And then we'll make our last increase in this stitch. and end with a single crochet in the stitch with our stitch marker. You can change your stitch marker to the last stitch of the round, and then we're just gonna tighten up that loop once more. For round three, we are going to make an increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next two stitches. So here we will make increase number one, 
we'll move over and make a single crochet move over and make our second single crochet then we have our second increase single crochet one single crochet two grab some yarn here here is our third increase and then we'll end with two single crochet change your stitch marker I'm just gonna tighten this up one more time just in case and then for round four we're gonna increase in the first stitch and we are gonna single crochet into the next. We'll be doing this six times around. Here is our first increase. Then move over and we're gonna do our single crochet. Here is our second increase. Single crochet. Our third increase. single crochet, our fourth increase, single crochet, here is our fifth increase, oops, single crochet, and then here is our sixth and last increase and then end with a single crochet. Change your stitch marker. For round five, we're gonna increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next two stitches. Here is our first increase. Single crochet one, single crochet two, Increase two, single crochet one, single crochet two, our third increase, single crochet one, single crochet two, here is our fourth increase. single crochet one, single crochet two, here is our fifth increase, single crochet one and two, here is our sixth and final increase and then end with two single crochet. Moving on, we're going to change our stitch marker. Okay, and starting round six, we are going to increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next three. So we're just continuing the pattern. This will be our first increase. We have single crochet one, two, and three. And then we'll do our second increase and then you can single crochet in the next three. This is our third increase. Single crochet in the next three. Here is our fourth increase. Single crochet in the next three. Our fifth increase. Single crochet in the next three.
and then here is our last increase. End with single crochet in the next three. Change your stitch marker. For round seven, we are going to increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next four, and we'll also be doing this six times. So start with your first increase, and then we'll single crochet in the next four. This is one, two, three, and four, and then increase again and then single crochet in your next four. Continue this pattern of increasing and single crocheting in the next four. Okay, I am reaching the last stitches of round seven. And then I am going to change my stitch marker. For round eight, it says to increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next five stitches. So this is increase one. And then we have five single crochet. One, two, three, four and five and then we have our second increase single crochet in the next five stitches pull off the hair that will always find its way into your yarn okay now we have our third increase here and then we will continue with five single crochet. Here is our fourth increase. Make five single crochet. Here's our fifth increase, five single crochet. And then our sixth increase, our last increase, finish with five single crochet. Okay, we are going to change our stitch marker. And then for round nine through 14, we're gonna single crochet in the next 42 stitches. So I'm gonna count my rounds super quick. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then we'll start on round nine. So for round nine through 14, we're gonna single crochet in the next 42 stitches. Make sure to check that you have 42 stitches because you don't want to crochet a bunch of single crochet rounds just to find out that you don't have the right number. So go ahead and do that. 
I'm also going to show you how we can use a stitch marker to keep track of our round. So I'm going to start round nine with just about three single crochet. Then I'm going to grab my other stitch marker and in that second stitch or so, I'm going to place a stitch marker across that round. That way I know that that's round nine. I'm going to continue crocheting around nine just to show you um, how I'll count it. Thank you guys for joining me on this crochet along. I have gone back and forth about counting too much, not counting enough, and then adding music and not adding music. So if you guys could just leave me some feedback if this is your first crochet along and what you think if it's too much counting or not enough. And I am going to place a little bit of music in this one. And I just want to know if it's something you like in the background or if it's something that's bothersome to you. And then if I can bug you to also let me know if this is your first crochet along or if you've done any of the others and just to uh, let me know where you are in your crochet journey. Okay, I'm reaching the end of round nine. I'm gonna change my stitch marker and now I'm just gonna show you, I'm gonna do a few stitches of round 10 just gonna single crochet my way around. Okay, and now from here, if you remember that your blue stitch marker is round nine, then you can count from here, round nine, and then round 10, and then 11, 12, and it'll just be easier to keep track of your rounds. So keep crocheting and we will meet back at the end of round 14. Okay, I'm back at the end of round 14. I changed my stitch marker. We're going to move on to round 15, which is a little different. We are going to make a decrease and then single crochet in the next five stitches. If you've never made a decrease before, I'm going to show you here. I do something called an invisible decrease. I will post my video that's a bit slower up on the right, and I'll show you here as well. You want to place your hook underneath the front loop of the first stitch, and then go directly underneath the front loop of the second stitch. You're gonna yarn over and pull through. You'll have two loops on your hook, and then you're gonna yarn over and pull through. And that is your first invisible decrease. You wanna make sure that you keep your yarn against your hook as you start your next single crochet. So here we're gonna single crochet five. This is one, single crochet two, single crochet three, single crochet four, and single crochet five. We're gonna start our next invisible decrease by going under the front loop of the first stitch and the front loop of the second stitch. We're gonna yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through. Then we're gonna make single crochet in the next five stitches. We're going to make our third decrease here, go under the front loop, front loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through. And then make single crochet in your next five stitches. If that is going too fast for you, go ahead and watch my other video because it takes it at a slower pace. Okay, we're going to be doing our fourth decrease. And then single crochet in the next five stitches. Here is our next decrease. Single crochet in the next five stitches. And here is our sixth decrease. Single crochet in the last five stitches. Change your stitch marker and now we're going to switch gears for a minute so we can embroider on the eyes. So grab your other stitch marker, place it in that loop so that we don't unravel, and then we will start to embroider. 
Grab your embroidery needle and your embroidery floss, cut a really long piece, and then just triple knot the end. And we are also going to grab some pins. You don't have to, but I just like to mark my rounds for this. We are going to find round 12 and 13, so I'm just going to count here. And I'm going to place a pin between round 12 and 13. You can also mark it with a stitch marker if you'd like. Okay, I try to find the middle section of my head, so I look from behind and I see where my stitch marker is. And it's not perfect, but it does give me some guidance. From here, I want to leave two stitches open on each side of the pin because I want five stitches total in between my embroidered eyes. So for now, I'm going to leave the pin in and I'm going to flip my head so that I can get to the inside. I'm going to take my embroidery needle and I'm going to grab a piece of a stitch of yarn. It doesn't have to be exactly underneath the stitch. Just pull that through. And then I'm going to go under the same stitch or a different stitch, doesn't really matter, because I want to make a knot on the inside of my head. So I'm going to pull that through, and once I have a loop on the end, I'm going to go from behind my loop, and I'm going to pull tight to make a knot. So now I'm going to go back to where my pin is, I'm going to move over two, and then I'm going to go into that third stitch from behind. So I'm going to go from inside my head, I'm going to go up through the stitch, making sure to leave two stitches open. At this point, I'm going to take out my pin because I don't want to hurt myself. <laughs> so once you get that pulled through, you're going to move up a round and over a stitch. So then you're going to go straight into that stitch from outside to inside and pull that in. Now we're going to go back to round 12 and 13 we're going to leave this stitch open and we're going to move over to the next stitch. So pull from inside to outside and then we're going to go back up through that same stitch that we made. Now you can leave it just like this or we can add some eyelashes. In order to add the eyelashes, I go back up through my stitch of 12 and 13 and then all I like to do is just go up around and just grab something in between here. So I'm gonna go from outside to inside. And then I'm gonna go back through that bottom stitch where I started my eyelash. And then I'm just gonna make one more eyelash going up. I'm just gonna scooch over a little bit, but I'm gonna stay on the same round as my other eyelash. And that's it. That's all she wrote. So we want to make sure that we have five stitches. Two, three, four, five. And then we'll go up through our sixth stitch. So we're going to go between round 12 and 13. You're going to move up around and over a stitch. Go from outside to inside. Then we want to make sure that we leave a stitch open in between the eyes. So we're going to go up through the stitch on round 12 and 13. And then go back up through that top stitch. To make our eyelash, I'm just going to fix this here. Sometimes when you go through the same stitch, it just kind of gets stuck together. To make the eyelash, I'm going to go back up to that corner stitch. I'm going to go up around and just grab a little bit of stitch there. I like to go in between two stitches for the eyelashes. And then I'm going to go back up to the corner stitch again. and then move over on one round up to finish my last eyelash. Okay, so now our eyes and our eyelashes are done. We wanna secure this with a knot, so I'm gonna go back on the inside of my head, grab a piece of stitch, pull that loop all the way through. I'm gonna go from behind my loop, 
And then we're going to pull through to make a knot. I usually like to make about two knots just to make sure that my eyes are secure. There are many different ways you can embroider this. I did this a completely weird way in my pattern um, and you can start all the way at the end. So do whatever feels most comfortable for you. As long as you leave five stitches open in between the eyes, there's no wrong way to do this. I do wanna mention something right here. We will be placing the beak in between the eyes. And if you are someone that does not like to assemble when the stuffing is inside the animal already, you can stop the video here and go ahead to the beak, make the beak, and then you can attach it before you stuff the animal. If not, we'll just continue on with round 16 of the head. Okay, so I'm all set up here. We're gonna start round 16. It says to decrease single crochet in the next four stitches. So we'll make our first decrease, single crochet in the next four, this is two, three, and four. And then we'll make another decrease. This is our second decrease. Single crochet in the next four. This is one, two, three, and four. Here's our third decrease single crochet in the next four. Here's our fourth decrease. Single crochet in the next four. Decrease number five. Single crochet in the next four. And ending with our sixth decrease and our last single crochet in the next four. Change your stitch marker. For round 17, we're gonna make one decrease single crochet in the next three stitches. Here's decrease one, single crochet in the next three, decrease two, single crochet in the next three, Decrease three, single crochet in the next three, decrease four, single crochet in the next three. Decrease five, single crochet in the next three, decrease six, and finish with your last three single crochet. Change your stitch marker. From here, we're gonna start to stuff the head so give yourself a lot of slack or add a stitch marker so your work doesn't unravel. And then we're gonna grab a little bit of polyfill here. I'm not gonna overstuff because we're gonna continue to stuff as we crochet, but I'm gonna grab a pretty big ball of stuffing and then I'll probably take some out. I like to stuff the top. We have that little point, so I wanna make sure that I stuff that little point and then I like to here I'm going to take a little bit out it's a little too much for me and then I like to make a hole in the middle so when I continue to add later on I just add to that hole for me I feel like it leaves my animals less lumpy lumpy looking 
So here I have a lot of room to crochet. I don't want to make this head taut just yet because I need to crochet and I don't want to have holes in my work. You can take out your extra stitch marker and get set up. And then for round 18, we're going to decrease in the first stitch, single crochet in the next two. We'll be doing this six times around. So here we're going to decrease in the first stitch, single crochet in the next two. Decrease two. And then single crochet in the next two. I'm going to let you continue with this pattern all the way to the end. Okay, reaching the end, we're just going to change our stitch marker and we're going to add a little bit more stuffing. So from here, I'm going to leave myself a lot of slack on my yarn or add a stitch marker. And then I'm going to add a little bit more stuffing to that hole in the middle that I made. I'm just going to add little bits as I go and I just want to make sure that I can still move around the head. Okay, only two more rounds to go. For round 19, we're going to decrease in the first stitch single crochet in the next six times around. So go ahead and continue the pattern of one decrease and one single crochet until you reach the end. Reaching the end of the round, I'm going to give myself a little bit more slack. I'm going to add my stitch marker and I'm going to add a little bit more stuffing. I know this starts to get tedious by adding stuffing every round, but I really do find it to be the best way to avoid holes in your amigurumi. And then once I'm happy with the stuffing, I'm going to continue on for round 20. So this is our last round here. We're going to decrease six times around so you are going to make six decreases and that will help us to close up our head. This is decrease one and then just make another decrease and continue decreases until the end of the round. For some reason this round seems to get tricky because you're kind of pulling your yarn over to the next stitch. So do the best you can and take your time. Okay, we've reached our last stitch. From here, we're gonna leave a long tail. We're gonna snip that off and then we're gonna fasten off by yarning over and pulling through. I'm going to tighten that end, take out my stitch marker, and then I'm going to grab my yarn needle. I'm going to thread that end into my yarn needle and we're going to close up this head. From here, I'm going to count my stitches and I like to count backwards because some of these stitches are hidden. So this is our fasten off. We have one, two, three, four, five, and my sixth stitch looks a little bit hidden here. What I'm going to do is put my yarn needle behind the front loop of that first stitch. 
So I'm going to pull it through, then I'm going to go to the next stitch, go behind the front loop, and pull it through. I like to turn my work so that the stitch is in front of me. Here's our third stitch. Here's our fourth, fifth, and our sixth stitch here. Now we want to close up this hole, but when we do, we want to watch and see where this hole closes. So I'm closing it up, and then I know that my hole was somewhere around here, so if I put my needle there, it kind of starts to open up a bit. You're going to insert your needle into that hole, and you're going to pull really tight. Don't pull too tight that you break your yarn, but tight enough that it pulls shut. Smush it back up, and then you'll have a flat bottom. Weave in your yarn really well, and then cut off the excess piece. Okay, so we finished with our head. We can put this to the side and we'll work on the body next. Moving on to the body, we're gonna stick with our color white and we are gonna make six single crochet into a magic circle. You can make a magic circle however you'd like or you can start with the slip knot and chain two and then single crochet six in the second chain from the hook. I'm gonna put my video up here, so if you wanna watch it at a slower pace, you can check this one out. So here is our fourth single crochet, our fifth, and our sixth. From here, I'm gonna tighten up that loop, and then I'm gonna place my stitch marker on the last stitch of the round. For round two, we're gonna increase in each stitch around. Don't get confused with this little blob here. Sometimes it looks like it could almost be a stitch, but it is just your slip knot. So place your hook in the first stitch and we are gonna make an increase. So that's two single crochet into the same stitch. Here's increase one. Increase two. Increase three, increase four, increase five, and increase six. We are going to change our stitch marker, then I'm gonna tighten up that magic circle. It will stay closed probably around, around three or four, so you just might have to tighten it a little. For round three, we're gonna increase single crochet in the next stitch. So this is increase one, and then we're gonna single crochet in the next. Here is our second increase. single crochet in the next stitch, increase, single crochet, this is our fourth increase, single crochet, here is our fifth increase, A single crochet and then decrease number six. End with a single crochet in your last stitch. Okay, change your stitch marker. For round four, we are going to do an increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next two stitches. Here we have our increase one. And then we'll single crochet in the next stitch and single crochet in the next stitch. So here we have increase two, single crochet one and two. This is increase three, single crochet one and two, increase four.
single crochet one and two increase five single crochet one and two and then increase number six and end with your two single crochet change your stitch marker moving on to round five we're going to increase in the first stitch single crochet in the next three we'll be doing this six times around so do your increase one single crochet in the next three increase two and then single crochet in the next three continue this all the way to the end of the round Okay, we're going to change our stitch marker for round six we are going to single crochet in the next 30 stitches so just count and make sure you have 30 stitches and then just single crochet all the way around i have to admit i was struggling with um my body because i don't really crochet all that much in a row anymore so i'm wondering do you guys crochet all your pieces in one day or do you you know like space them out because I used to crochet like big animals all in one day and sometimes I would even assemble it and I would just like be on fire <laughs> and now I can barely do a crochet long all in one day because the next day I can barely move my hands so it's interesting um, when time goes on I guess maybe with age too I'm not sure but um, yeah I think I'm gonna be hurting tomorrow <laughs> I actually even started designing smaller animals because of the way my hands have been so yeah just wanted to share <laughs> okay we're reaching the end here we're going to change our stitch marker for round seven we're going to do things just a little bit different because we want to add some shaping to the body so here we're going to do three decreases and then we're gonna do some single crochet and then we're gonna do a chunk of decreases again. So I'm just gonna talk you through this. We are gonna start out with making three decreases. So we'll make decrease one. We're using our invisible decrease. Decrease two. And then decrease three. We're gonna single crochet in the next five stitches. So this is single crochet one, two, three, four, and five. Then we're gonna make one decrease. Then we're gonna single crochet in the next five. Here's one, two, three, four, and five. And then we're gonna make another decrease. We're gonna single crochet in the next four. So we have single crochet one, two, three, and four. Then we're gonna make another decrease.
and then we're going to single crochet into the last four. You should have 24 stitches at this point and you may just want to stop and just check um, because there are a lot of funky decreases here. I'm going to change my stitch marker and for round eight we're going to do the same beginning. We're going to do three decreases. So here's decrease one, decrease two, it's a little tricky in that corner, and then decrease three. Then we're going to single crochet in the next two. And then we're going to make one decrease. Here is our decrease. We're going to single crochet in the next eight stitches. So here is single crochet one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. We're going to make one decrease. Single crochet in the next two stitches. And then we're going to make another decrease to end. You should have 18 stitches, so make sure you have 18 at this point. Change your stitch marker. And then we're just going to single crochet around for 18 stitches. And this is round nine. Adding the shaping just makes it a little harder to hold, um, but it's like hard to hold when there's no stuffing and then it's hard to hold when there is stuffing. So it's like you can't win. I originally made this little guy in DK yarn and it was Kotlin brand or Kotlin by We Crochet and it's um I think it's more like a cotton yarn and I really love the way she turned out uh, in that yarn too. So feel free to use DK as well. She really comes out just a tad bit smaller. Okay, we're reaching the end here. We're going to start stuffing the body at this point. We only have two more rounds left, but we're just going to get her started. So go ahead and give yourself a lot of slack. Grab a stitch marker if you want so it doesn't unravel. I've had that happen to me so many times and oh, it's just not fun. So add a, just a t little bit of stuffing, just make sure to get that little butt part that sticks out so that the shaping actually uh, is noticeable. And once you're happy with it, we'll have one more chance to stuff so you don't have to overstuff it. We'll move on. Okay, we're gonna move on to round 10. It's one more um, funny round. So I'm just gonna get set up here. For round 10, we're gonna make three decrease. So here's decrease one, decrease two, and decrease three. We're going to single crochet in the next six stitches. And then we're going to end with three decrease. So here is decrease one, decrease two, and decrease three. Change your stitch marker and we will single crochet around 12 stitches. So make sure you have 12 stitches for our last round. So this is round 11. So single crochet all the way around and we will meet back at the end.
Okay, we're reaching the last stitch. I'm just gonna take out my stitch marker. From here, I'm gonna leave a long tail because I need to assemble this body to the head. So leave a long tail, snip off the end, and then we're just gonna fasten off by yarning over and pulling all the way through. You can add a little bit more stuffing to the body. We wanna make sure that it does have a good amount of stuffing so that it can hold up the head. Oops, <laughs> he wants to fly away already. And then once you're happy with the stuffing, you can place him to the side and we will work on the wings next. Okay, moving on to the wings, we're still using our white. We are gonna start with six single crochet into a magic circle. So I'm just gonna do my slip knot, chain two, and then make six single crochet into that second stitch from the hook. Again, you can watch the video. I'm gonna link all my magic circle videos, including the not really a magic circle video down below. Okay, so here we're finishing up. I'm going to tighten the middle. I'm gonna add a stitch marker to my last stitch of the round. And then we only have two rounds for this guy. So the next round is increase in each stitch around. So we're gonna increase six times. So here, oop, I am really struggling. Here is increase two. Increase three, four, increase five, and then our last increase. Okay, I'm gonna tighten up my magic circle. Try to really Tighten it up there. I'm gonna take out my stitch marker and we're gonna do something called a seamless join. So leave a long piece of yarn for attaching, snip that off, and then we're gonna pull the yarn straight through. You're not gonna fasten off here. Just go right through. Grab your yarn needle and thread in your yarn. What we're gonna do is we're gonna find our last stitch. So that is this one. We're gonna move over one to the left. We're gonna place our yarn needle through both stitches, both loops, I'm sorry. And then you're gonna move over to that last stitch that you just made and you're gonna go right down the middle. Then you're gonna pull through. This makes a faux stitch for your wing and so you don't have the biggest gap ever that you know working in the round gives you. We're gonna weave in our end from the magic circle. It can be a bit of a pain, so just go stitch by stitch if you have to but we do wanna weave that in because this is our wing, that's it. Once you get that weaved in, just snip off the end. And then you can either leave your wings plain like this or we can give them like that furry look with our pet slicker brush. So I believe this is like a cat brush or something. Um, I think I remember brushing our cats with this back in the day, but um, Go ahead and start slow and you're just gonna do like a mini motions, but you really have to be careful because sometimes you can grab your middle circle piece of tail and you can pull it right through. So try to be really intentional when you're doing this and just do quick motions all the way around the wing. From here, we're gonna make one more wing so you can rewind the video and just make another wing and then brush it out if you'd like and then put them to the side and we're gonna work on the beak next. Starting on the beak, we're gonna grab our other color. We are gonna make a slip knot so you can wrap that yarn around two fingers, push the back to the front, and pull up on that loop. So that makes your slip knot. You can use the tail to adjust, and then we're gonna insert our hook into our slip knot. We're gonna start out by chaining four, so yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, three, and four. Starting in the second chain from the hook, this is the first, this is the second. We're just gonna single crochet in the next three. So I'm gonna go underneath that top chain and this is single crochet two and then single crochet three. 
we're gonna flip that piece over so now your tail is gonna be hanging on the right and we're gonna single crochet in the next three so if you can't see here would be our first one you can go underneath here here and then this is our third so I have single crochet one this is single crochet two and then single crochet three. We're gonna place a stitch marker in that last stitch. You should have six stitches total right now. So here we'll count, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We're just gonna start crocheting in that next stitch. So for round two, we're going to increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next, and we're going to do this three times. So we have an increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next. Here is our second increase. Single crochet in the next stitch, increase three, and then end with a single crochet. And that's it, that's our beak. And you're like, what? <laughs> okay, go ahead and leave a long tail for attaching and we're going to fasten off. So yarn over and pull your yarn all the way through. I'm going to take out my stitch marker and then what I like to do is tuck in this little piece here from your beginning. If it's too long just snip a little piece off. And then you can either close your beak shut or you can leave it open. I like to usually close my pieces. It's just kind of what I've always done. So I'm going to insert my yarn needle and since this has a little jagged edge, I'm going to go to my next stitch over and just put in my yarn needle to kind of pull that in. And now here I'm just going to go through like two or three stitches to close this up. I'm going to place my needle in there and then just kind of zigzag back and forth. And again, you don't need to do this but it's just an extra step I guess I make myself do. And that's your beak, that's it. So now we're gonna move on to assembly. Okay, moving on to assembly, go ahead and grab your head and your body and then I like to use some pins because that really helps to kind of figure out where you wanna place your parts. And I'm gonna look at my pattern for reference and it says to attach the body between round 18 and 19 of the head. So I am just gonna find round 18 and 19. I am gonna place some pins all around 18 and 19. And now this doesn't mean that that's exactly where the body's gonna go, but this gives me a guideline to see if this is where I want it to go. So now when I place my body, I do see that I actually like it there. You wanna make sure that your little shaping is in the back. So make sure when you're pinning it that that's in the back and that it's straight. And now I'm going to use quite a few pins to go through my body. I try to grab both loops and now I'm going to try to hit between round 18 and 19 as I am pinning my body to my head. There are less stitches in my body than there is in round 18 and 19. So I'm just going to do the best I can to kind of pull my body with my pin towards that round. It feels a little unnatural, but just pull it out. So my 18 and 19 is there. I'm gonna just try to pull this out to meet that round. And I think I'm looking pretty good on my pins right now. I'm gonna take out those extra pins, then I'm gonna grab my yarn needle and thread in your yarn. And now what we're gonna do, and I'm gonna to try to show this to you the best I can, 
we're going to go underneath a stitch of the head. I'm going to pull that all the way through and then I'm going to go under a stitch of the body. You want to make sure you go under both loops. Go ahead and pull that through and then pull it tight. Okay, you're going to move over a stitch on your head. And then go under both loops of the body. Sometimes it gets a little tricky to go underneath both of them. But you can really just take your time and just get under them. So here we're just going to be going all the way around the head picking up a stitch and then picking up a stitch of the body. These bent tip yarn needles are really helpful for when you're uh, doing assembly. So if you don't have one, I highly recommend them. I'll link those below as well. And it's kind of funny because I had a yarn needle when I started like crocheting in like 2014 and it was not a bent tip, but it is now. <laughs> Because I have used that thing so much, I actually made it to look just like this one because of all the assembly. So it was kind of funny. So here we're going to continue going around the body. I'm going to take out pins as I go, going underneath two loops of the body. Do a check every so often just to make sure your body's looking straight and that the back of the body is actually where you want it. Because things can shift very quickly when we're doing assembly. Here I'm going into my last stitch of my head and then I'm going to do the last stitch of my body and then I'm going to show you my little trick here. I'm going to go slow as I pull this through and then I'm going to have a little loop that I have left over and I'm going to put my needle behind the loop and I'm just going to kind of like seesaw it closed and that makes a little knot. If it's a little loose, don't worry because then you're going to weave in your yarn and that knot is going to pull right into the head. I just like to have that extra security. You don't have to do this. You can just weave in your yarn, but if you like it, try it out. So now we want to weave in our yarn really well and then cut off the excess piece. Next we're going to grab our beak and if you haven't already assembled it uh, in the beginning when you made your head, we are going to attach it right in between the eyes. You don't even really need to count or anything. It's just between round 12 and 13. I would just place a pin. And I want to mention these pins with the hearts on the end. I bought them because they were so cute, but they are really sturdy. They're a lot sturdier than the round pins, but I like to use those um, for doing the body. But those heart pins really do keep things in place. So if you see them, they're a good purchase. From here, we're going to go underneath the loop of the head or a stitch, I meant. And then you want to go up through the beak, but you want to make sure that you go through two stitches. Sorry, I'm out of frame. I'm sorry, I was out of frame there. I'm going to try to show you on this next time. So now I'm going to go underneath a stitch of the head and then I'm going to go back up through here you go, a stitch of the beak. So make sure that you're going underneath four loops and that's two stitches total. So now I'm going underneath the next stitch of my head. I'm going to go up through my beak. Making sure to get underneath that loop. And now I'm going to go one more time underneath my head.
And then I'm going to go just up through this corner piece here. Okay, so I'm going to do the same little trick that I did for the body. I'm going to go under a stitch here. I'm going to make a loop and then I am going to make a knot. I'm going to kind of seesaw this kind of rock it back and forth. And then if it's a little loose, it's not a problem because we're going to weave that piece in. So go in right where you made that knot so you can hide it and then pull it all the way through. And you don't even see it. So my piece is a little short, so I'm not gonna be able to weave that much into the head, but I did want to show you here. I was kind of confused when I was looking at the nose. I was like, what is that in the, in next to the nose? But it was actually the black embroidery floss from the eye. If this does happen to you, you can just move that floss over with a sharp pair of scissors or like a needle or something. Okay, so the beak is done, and now we're gonna move on to attaching our wings. Moving on to the wings, I marked around nine and 10 of the body. That's what my pattern says, but really you can just place your wings wherever it looks good to you, really. Just pin them around and see if you want them more forward, higher, lower, and just see what looks good. But in my pattern, I do suggest that you put it between around nine and 10 of the body. Once you get them in place, go ahead and thread in your yarn through your yarn needle. And then I'm really just gonna go through one stitch of the wing. So I'm gonna grab, go under two stitches of the body. Then I'm gonna go through one stitch of the wing. And I'm gonna go slow because I'm gonna do my little knot trick where I make a loop at the end, go behind the loop, and then pull that through. If you want your wing to be a little bit closer to your body and not as movable, go ahead and maybe attach like two or three stitches of your wing instead of just one. Moving on to the other side, I'm just going to do the same exact thing. So I'm going to let you guys do that. Go underneath two stitches of the body and then one stitch of the wing. You can make a knot if you'd like and then weave your yarn in. Okay, so our wings are done and actually our Dottie the Duck is done. Now there's a few things that we can add. We can add a little hair tuft on top with a bow and I'll show you how to do that. And then we're also gonna make a nest if you wanna add, add one for her to sit in. If you wanted to add a little piece of hair for her and a bow, I'm gonna show you that. Just go ahead and grab two long pieces of yarn i picked the white for her hair and then a pink for the bow and what we're going to do is grab your crochet hook if you have a smaller one that might be best but if not we'll just go with this we're going to place our hook underneath like round between round one and two of the head make sure you don't pull out your magic circle because i have done that and i am almost about to do it again right here so i'm going to kind of be a little bit slicker when i do that so go ahead and put that hook underneath that stitch and then you're going to have your yarn in half. You're going to have your hook right in the middle of your piece. So you want it the same length. Then you're going to hook that loop onto there and then just shimmy it on through. Be very careful and then leave a loop open and then you can just pull it through with your fingers. Now this is a really long hair top, so we're gonna give it a haircut. Okay, I'm gonna cut her hair. And then if you want it to look kind of fuzzy, you can just turn the yarn and unravel the pieces and it'll kind of make it end up being a little bit fuzzy. I like to use a pin sometimes if I can't get those pieces apart. And it gives it like a little curly look too. And now for the bow, I am not a bow master whatsoever, so I'm just going to make a knot and try to keep the knot as far down as I can. 
if you know how to make really pretty bows without having to make a knot, then I would just make the bow and just glue it because this, it's a big possibility that if a kid's playing with this, that that bow is gonna come right off. You could also possibly glue it if you'd like, like add a little bit of fabric glue once you make the knot and maybe it'll stay. Okay, here I'm gonna try to make a bow the best I can. I'd like to give myself a lot of yarn because I feel like, I don't know, my hands are too big for this or something. Okay, so once I feel like my bow is looking pretty good, I'm just gonna snip off the ends. Okay, so now your hair is done and your bow is there. Now we're gonna move on to the nest so she has somewhere to sleep tonight. Okay, for our nest, go ahead and grab a bulky yarn and a J hook. We are gonna start with six single crochet into a magic circle. So I am actually gonna do a completely different way than I've been doing. And I will put that link to that video up here if you wanna try a different way. So I am just gonna do six single crochet into a magic circle. I'm gonna tighten up my loop and place a stitch marker on my last stitch of the round. For round two, we're gonna increase six times around. So we're gonna increase in each stitch around. Okay, making our sixth deep increase. I'm gonna tighten up that magic circle again and then I'm gonna change my stitch marker. For round three, I'm gonna increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next. So here is my first increase. I'm gonna move over and make a single crochet. Here's increase two single crochet, and then continue that pattern, increase and single crochet. On our last stitch here, I'm gonna change my stitch marker. And then for round four, we're gonna increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next two. So here's increase one, single crochet one, single crochet two, increase two, single crochet one and two. and then continue doing an increase, single crochet in the next two. Okay, moving our stitch marker, and then for round five, we're gonna slip stitch into the back loop only. So we're gonna go underneath the back loop. So 
So to slip stitch, I'm gonna place my hook underneath that back loop. I'm gonna yarn over and pull the yarn through. Instead of yarning over, I'm just gonna pull through that stitch. So here we go again, we're gonna yarn over, pull through, and then pull through that stitch. I'm just gonna slip stitch all the way around until I reach the end. If you want a taller nest, you can single crochet into the back loop only, but if you like it to be a little shorter, then you can just slip stitch all the way around. Okay, we're reaching the end and that's the end of our nest. So I'm gonna take out my stitch marker. I'm gonna do one more slip stitch underneath both stitches just because it always has like a really big drop off when you're working in the round. I'm going to leave a long piece of yarn and cut off the end. I'm gonna pull that yarn all the way through. I'm not gonna fasten off. We're gonna do that seamless join again. So I'm gonna weave in my tail here into my yarn needle. And then I'm gonna find my last stitch, which was this one. And I'm gonna move over one stitch to the left and I'm gonna pull that yarn through. And then I'm gonna go down the middle of the last stitch that I made. And I'm gonna pull that yarn through. And that helps us not have that huge ridge on the end. So now we are going to weave in both pieces of our yarn because we don't want those showing. And then I will show you the nest. So here it is, super simple and ducks love it. So she fits in perfectly. I actually had to Google if ducks had nests because I was as I was crocheting this, but they kind of make their own. <laughs> but now we're gonna make her one. So here's our finished Dottie the Duck. Thank you guys for joining me on this crochet along. If you like this one, please subscribe to my channel as I have weekly crochet tutorials or crochet alongs. And if you're looking for some free crochet patterns, go to yarnsociety.com.